Hey guys, welcome back to the shop for another Tool Tuesday. What I have here is some brand new hardware from TMX that we're going to be installing on our Miltronics ML162 CNC lathe. And what I'm doing is I'm replacing the factory three jaw chuck, which is what this guy is right here. This is the chuck that came equipped on the machine. This is an eight inch diameter three jaw. It was brand new. There's nothing wrong with this, but what I wanted to do was <clears throat> upgrade from a standard three jaw chuck to the TMX six jaw set true truck. Now I started using this same exact chuck on my Victor lathe in my home shop several years ago, and I absolutely fell in love with the performance that this uh, six jaw set true actually gives you. You can dial this thing in to absolute zero run out. And because of the six jaws, I think you get, you get better holding consistency with your work pieces. You have a lot less deflection whenever you have material hanging out because of the total of the six jaws all the way around. It's almost like a, uh, a collet is a type of hold that you get. So I know that you get a better holding performance with a six jaw and with the ability to adjust the run out to this thing to well under, you know, say a half a thousandth run out, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to upgrade to this. I know that it's gonna be an excellent chuck, so that's what we're gonna do. This right here is gonna be the adapter plate for the spindle. I have an A25 spindle nose on my machine, and we've got the adapter plate, and then the chuck is gonna be in this box here. Uh, we are going to a 10 inch diameter chuck. As I said, this is an eight inch, and this is the 10 inch, and I believe that was the maximum diameter chuck that Miltronics recommends that you put on the ML16. All right, so uh, we'll, we'll show you what the hardware here looks like. And before we get started getting it installed, I have one other minor project that I want to do. I want to be able to use my sky hook to be able to help me install this on the spindle because this is uh, pretty heavy. I weighed it in the box and it weighs about 76 pounds. So that's kind of a heavy chuck to be trying to hold yourself and get it up on the spindle and then get it bolted on. So we're going to use the sky hook, but I need to make a little T-nut adapter so we can mount that onto the uh, cross slide of the machine there. All right, so let's give you a peek at the new hardware. Let's pull it out, see what it looks like. I haven't even opened up the box yet. And then we'll get started on our project and get this thing mounted on the machine. All right, so let's take a look at our hardware. It's gonna be our bolts. And then here is the adapter plate. adapter plate for A25 spindle. TMX builds very high quality tooling, machine tool accessories, chucks, tool holders, vices. I really like their stuff and I've got several tools that I've invested in that were made by TMX. They are made in Poland. You can see it right there, made in Poland. And I have nothing, I have nothing but good things to say about that company. So. The machining looks beautiful on this adapter plate. We'll get it cleaned off and we'll get that mounted on there. All right. All right, there's that beautiful six jaw. All right, we got our, there's our chuck wrench. And let me see if I can open this guy up without having to pick it up. It's going to be your inspection report right there. There we go. Look at that. That is gorgeous. Just like the one on the Victor there. If you guys are ever in the market for a good chuck for your machines, I would highly recommend that you check out the uh, TMX brand. As I said before, everything that I have purchased and owned from them has been high quality stuff. So I support TMX and I'm gonna be very happy to have this chuck mounted on the lathe there. Get this guy picked up. I <clears throat> just wanted to see the back there. All right, very nice. That's gonna be our mounting bolts and then on the the back of the chuck right here, this is an adapter that was mounted to the chuck. You can see the split line there. And you've got four set screws there, 90 degrees or 180 degrees out. And then that's how you 
set this thing true. Once you get it mounted on there and you get it bolted to the adapter plate right here, you're gonna end up using these four set screws here to adjust the chuck to the center. All right, so looking good. We'll go ahead and uh, get started on the other little uh, minor machining project so we can mount our sky hook to the, to the lathe so that we can go ahead and get this guy mounted up. It's the T-slot beautifully. That's the tool post holder that I use. Got the bottom dressed off, so it's not gonna dig in and scratch in any way. And we can set that guy up here, or you can, you can turn it that way, whichever way we want. Half inch stud, nice heavy duty washer. get it started straight and a flange nut to tighten it all down I don't know if this is going to make a difference in the load. I want to think that it will, but instead of hanging it off over here on that side, decided to go ahead and swing it around to this side and then reach over the tool post with the sky hook whenever we're doing our load. It should be just fine. We're not picking up very much weight. The chuck weighs less than 100 pounds and it should be just fine. And it's going to help me be able to uh, install and remove uh, the chuck or, or work pieces like that. All right, so we can swing that out. We've got the We've got to travel all the way back and the hook extends out here where we can set a chuck down in front of it or a shaft or whatever kind of work piece and be able to reach it. Pick it up, swing it in there, 
be able to move this thing in and use that for our heavy lifting so I don't have to kill my back trying to hold a, a big heavy chuck to get it installed on, on the spindle. We're ready to uh, check our adapter fit, make sure it, it fits properly. And this is gonna be your mounting face there on the spindle nose. And I can see some very, very minor scratches on here from handling it at the factory, I suppose. I'm just gonna take my precision flat stones here. I just want to make sure that there's no high spots on there. So I'm gonna set that on there and it feels good. So those minor scratches that you see in the surface there, not gonna affect it. But I just wanted to double check before we get it mounted on there. That should be good to go. Okay, let's start getting this stuff mounted up here. So here's our spindle face. First thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and get the chuck guard bolted back on. I had to remove that whenever I was running the uh, face driver tool on here. So it's the chuck guard and it, and it actuates the, uh, the safety switch over here whenever you ro rotate it around. And when you disengage it, it won't allow the machine or the spindle to turn on. And it simply just bolts to the, bolts to the face right here. Make sure that the spindle face here is completely clean. Give it a wipe, make sure that there's no lint on there from the towel. I think that's gonna be good. And we're gonna repeat that on our adapter plate here too. Make sure it's good and clean. You have this one or one alignment pin there that you have to line up with these guys. And that's, you can see it right there. It's, One of these guys in there to hold it, make sure it doesn't fall off. Bolts have just a touch of <clears throat> anti seize on them. for our chuck now. This chuck did not come with a tapped hole that you can screw an eye bolt into. So we'll just use our chuck hook there to hold it and get it mounted in there. That's gonna make that job a breeze. We want to make sure that the back of the chuck is nice and clean. I have wiped this thing several times. It should be good. Same thing with our backing plate there or our adapter plate. Clean it, make sure there's nothing on it. Just give it a wipe with my hand, try to remove any of that lint that might have stuck to it. Same thing with the chuck there. I'm gonna use the controls of the machine here to just very gently walk it up and see if we can line it up. And this right here is the beauty of having this sky hook so that I can put it on this machine and hold it so that I don't have to pick this thing up by myself. I have to try to get the the adapter plate to line up there. And continue walking it in. All right, there we go. Walk it in a little further. Let's see if 
we can push it in. There we go. Put a little bit of pressure on the hook. There it is. Uses a 10 millimeter wrench. Got it. Okay. Take this out. All right, real happy with the addition of the sky hook on the Miltronics here. As said, I mean, I don't foresee taking this off very much, but if we end up going back on there with our face driving tool occasionally, that's when we'll take this off. But for the most part, this will probably just stay on there. But we may occasionally have a, uh, you know, a heavier shaft that I want to be able to get up in here and get into the chuck, and that's where the sky hook will uh, really help me out there. We can mount it a little further back on this other T-slot if we want to, but that's gonna work out really good. Just a really nice helper tool to have around the shop to save your back and let this do the heavy lifting. We want to go ahead and snug up our three mounting bolts, but we don't want them really tight. We just want it tight enough that it's gonna hold it in place so that we can use our four adjusting screws there to get it set true. I'm just going to run it in there and just give it a couple hits with the impact here. Okay, that should be good. Hopefully that's not too tight. And then we'll use a 10 millimeter Allen wrench to come in here and use this to um, adjust the chuck. Just going to go ahead and run them in until they touch. I got this piece of, this is a uh, Thompson hardened bar stock right here. These, this is uh, uh, turned and ground and it's hardened. That's what we're gonna roll with there. <clears throat> we are gonna start off with a uh, one inch travel, uh, 1,000th resolution indicator just because I know it's gonna be a few thou out. And then once we get it close, we can certainly switch over to a, uh, a finer resolution indicator. And I'm hoping that you guys can See that there, I'll move this around. So we got a little zero there. This is the first time indicating a uh, chuck on the CNC lathe for me. All right, let's see what we got. Oh yeah, it's 10, 11, 12. So we got about 12 thousandths right there. There's our high spot. So, yep, there's our high spot. So we've got a screw right there. Let me see. This is, uh, I will say, this kind of throws you off sometimes. When I've, I've indicated this many times on the Victor and it seems like it's always the opposite direction of what you're trying to, to do there. So this is high that way, so I wanna push it that way. Let's see if we can make that happen. See, it's making it go the other way. Weird. All right, so we gotta loosen the other one back up now. Loosen that one up and come around. See if we can get it close. So it's loosen your lows. So we'll just snug our lows, loosen our highs, but we should be able to hopefully just adjust the lows there and push it since we're within a couple of thousandths, that right there is one and a half. It's about a thousandths and we're in between the adjusting screws. So I need to do a little bit there and a little bit right here and see if we can get it to line up again. Pretty close. I'm gonna see if I can get as close as I can with this and then we'll put the test indicator on there and see what we see what we get. High, low. It looks like I'm going to say two tenths run out right there. Now what we'll have to do is uh, loosen the chuck, tighten it up, see what kind of repeatability that we get there too, because that's ultimately what we want as well. 
is not just indicate the part that's in there right now. We want to be able to stick that back in there and it repeat the measurements each and every time. So let's get a different indicator and see if we can get this uh, any closer than we got right there. Okay, we've got the uh, dial indicator. I swapped it out for the uh, tenths reading. This is the uh, number 25-111 indicator. Let's see if I can get it in there. And I like using these dial indicators like this just because they're easier to see and it's easier to show the viewer, you, what we're looking at there. Unless you got a camera where we're zoomed in. But let's see if we can use this guy right here. I'll make sure you guys can see this. Use our fine adjust. All right. I said two thousandths. Let's see if I'm right or if I was wrong. It looks like I was wrong and it's actually <laughs> less than one tenth. Wow. I mean, is that even right? Am I touching? Let's just move it. Let's move it. That's about as close as you're going to get indicating it right there. Wow. So you're always going to see a little bit of movement there because that's coming from the actual drivetrain itself, your spindles, your bearings and things like that. You're going to have some minute amount of movement in there, but I'm not even seeing a half a tenth there. So that's pretty incredible. That's, Closer than I thought it was. All right, so I'm just gonna move our dial indicator out of the way. And let's unchuck. I'm gonna go to our uh, pinion there. You got a zero stamped on this thing. That That's sort of, that's your go-to pinion that you should uh, tighten up. We're gonna loosen it up. Take the rod and stick it back in there. Tighten it. Put our dial back on here. Just got to get it close and then use the fine adjust on the Noga here to uh, get it in there to where you want it. All right, so there you go. We did not repeat very well. Now that could have been the way that I chucked it. I don't know. We definitely want to get a better repeatability than that. There are a few little nicks on that rod so that may not be perfect material to use there. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do this over again. We're gonna do it one more time. Like I said, there are a few nicks on this thing and hopefully I wasn't chucked up on anything that was throwing it, throwing it off. feels good when you spin it. Let's try it again. These are fine adjust. All right, we did not repeat well, but let's go ahead and adjust it some more and see if we can improve that. So we're basically almost two thousandths. All right, we got about three tenths there. We'll snug that one a little bit. All right, there we go. Very, very little movement on that. Let's loosen it up. Go back in there. Try it again. Are we going to repeat? So we're about a foul and two tenths there. So I'm not sure it should be repeating better than that. So I don't know what I'm doing to throw it off, but I'm just going to keep playing with it here until we get it right. Two tenths. Snug these guys up. 
I want to make sure that the chuck is not moving. Okay, still not there. So it's not wanting to repeat perfectly for me. All right, I think one of my problems here is this uh, Thompson's bar is not perfectly straight. I think it's got a little bit of a, it's got enough bend in it that it's causing our problem out here where we're putting it back in in a different place and it's showing run out. I need to get it, I need to get it set up on the granite plate on some V-blocks and inspect it and uh, see, see if it's um, out of round or bent. But if we leave it, so right there we've got about two tenths, not quite two tenths. And I was able to repeat it a couple times right here just by loosening the chuck, just loosening the chuck, tightening it back up, just this one. And now it's repeating a little bit better. That, that time it's about three, two and a half tenths, pretty close. So I think we're good. And I'm gonna leave it alone right there. You know, two or three tenths is not, is not very much. What I usually use, when I have to, whenever I'm doing this on the Victor lathe, I've got a plug gauge that I use. It's precision ground, and it's only about that long, and that's what I usually use to indicate that one right there. So I think this bar is not straight, and that's one of the problems that it's given us. And we are rubbing ever so slightly on the back side right there. I don't know if we can just get that to wear in. I'm not sure what actually is rubbing. I hope it's not the bolt. But we'll go ahead and turn it on there. That's 500 RPM. Didn't quieten it up that time. And I think we're going to be good to go. But I'm going to keep uh, checking it. I just don't want to uh, keep boring you with the same old stuff right there. But I am going to um, get a different plug gauge, bring it in, because I got it at my other toolbox at the house. And then I'll go ahead and re-indicate this and see if this is repeating it should be brand spanking new and the other six jaw i have always repeats very very well i'm excited to have this guy and i think this is going to give us better performance on our turning there when we're using our miltronics all right i've got you set up on our granite surface plate here and i suspected that this bar was give that's what was giving me the problem and i was correct that's this is the problem right here this bar it wasn't the chuck this is this piece of Thompson bar stock. I don't remember where I got this, just landed in my possession. I've had it here in the shop for the past year and a half or so. I use it for just different things, odd and ends, you know. I usually put it in the indexing spacer whenever I get it mounted up on the mill. Uh, when I want to find the center of the spacer, that's typically what I'm using this for right here, okay? I haven't used it for indicating a chuck in yet. But we've got it on this V block. We've got an indicator set. And if I just gently rotate the shaft without trying to move the V block around, you will see that indicator moving. And it is moving about two thousandths of an inch right there, okay? And that is about what we were getting whenever I was unchucking this and then chucking it back up. We were getting anywhere from one and a half to two thousandths out on our repeatability. So this was the culprit right here. This is the problem, all right? So I, it's not the chuck. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and uh, I'm gonna grab one of my really good precision plug gauges there. It's at, it's at my home shop in the toolbox. And I'll bring it down here and I'll make sure that I have one here now, uh, keeping our box here. And we will re-indicate re the chuck. And at that point, we should be good to go, okay? But I wanted to show this. This is a good way that you can uh, check run out on any kind of shaft there. Put it on your granite plate here if you got a good a good V block that you can use and just be real gentle with it. You can rotate it and um, and check for run out, basic run out there anyway. So that's what the problem was. I wanted to prove that and then share that with you. And so I will uh, I'll be back on the machine to make sure that we get this we get that new six jaw dialed in perfectly.
All right, so it occurred to me after that last clip there, instead of waiting around for a, um, a different plug gauge, I've got plenty of nice uh, carbide shank tools around here that I've been using. So how about we use this guy to get this indicated? This should be as about as accurate as we can get with a uh, precision ground shank there. This is a Helicool brand, half inch roughing end mill with a nice long shank there. So it should give me enough. Uh, this is a little smaller than the shank, so I should have to had no issue with it chucking on the flutes there and chipping that end mill. All right. Just got to be careful with it so that you don't chip it getting it in there. All right, and I want to make sure before I tighten it up that I got enough room for my indicator right here next to the chuck. All right, so we'll pull that out just a little bit right about there. And we'll see if we can use this carbide end mill shank to get it trued up. All right. I'm just going to focus on this one pinion for this exercise and see if it repeats just using the one. Okay. So we got about three and a half now. I really got it out of skew that last time. Landed on uh, just about a tenth. By the way, I thought I would uh, mention this. I looked up the spec on the TMX website for this particular chuck, and they said that the uh, guaranteed TIR, TIR repeatability is six tenths. Okay, so if we if we get repeatability six tenths or under on our dial, we should be within the manufacturer's spec. So, like right there, I'm going to leave that alone. That's about a tenth run out. So what I'm going to do is just loosen the chuck. I'm not going to take the tool out. I'm just going to loosen it. And then we're going to tighten it back up. Look at that. It repeated. I would say near exactly what we, what we just did. Let's try it one more time. I knew this thing would repeat. I was just giving you guys bad information and using a bad part. All right, that time we got two tents. Let's make sure that we're snug on our mounting bolts. All right, back to a tent there. All right, let's try it again. Loosen it up. We got three tenths that time. So that may be, that may be the best that we're gonna get there since now I know that the repeatability should be within six tenths that's four tenths that time let's hope that it doesn't get any worse than that but typically whenever i would uh get good repeatability on the victor lay that was it was about a half a thousandths so i think it's repeating now so we're getting anywhere from two to four tenths on our repeatability whenever we unchuck and chuck that one right there is right at four. So I think that's where it's kind of settling out at on repeating. Do it again. Yep. Three tenths that time. I think we're gonna leave it alone. We're gonna let it run right where it's at there. There we go. A thousand RPM. There's seventeen fifty. Back to a thousand, and that's it. All right, I think I'm going to settle for where we're at, but I'm happy with it. So we were getting anywhere from two to four tenths repeatability 
on uh, unchucking it, chucking it back up. And that's, uh, that's closer than what I had before. And you can always, the, the beauty of this chuck is if you need to put something in here and dial it in absolutely dead nut zero on run out, that's, you can do that with this. It's, it's, it turns it into a four jaw chuck at that point. Tighten your workpiece up and then adjust these if you need to get a workpiece dialed in, absolutely true. Another one of the beauties of the TMX six jaw chuck. All right, guys, well, that's going to conclude the install of our new six jaw TMX chuck there. Real happy to have it, and I think that's going to be a great addition for our lathe here, being able to adjust it to absolute zero if we need to. And I think after we got past our goof up of using a, a bad rod to be able to get that thing indicated, I think we figured out what was going on there and we corrected that issue. We have a good chuck with good repeatability and it's gonna be uh, a fine tool to have here on our Miltronic CNC lathe. So I do have another uh, project coming up very soon. I'm gonna get started on using our CNC lathe. So a few months back, I showed machining some of these guys right here, these, uh, these pinion shafts. I actually have another batch of these to machine, only it's gonna be a slight, slightly modified version of this, a little bit longer uh, than this guy right here. So I have jumped back into my Fusion 360 training. That's something that I've been working on over the past couple of weeks, uh, getting, trying to get re-familiar with Fusion 360 and learning how to properly use that. I have a long way to go. There's so much to learn in Fusion or any kind of CAD software for that matter, but I want to try to uh, get familiar with it so that I can be a little bit more comfortable sitting at the computer and drawing up parts like this, you know, sketching it, drawing parts, and then using the, the, the CAD and CAM to be able to come out to our Miltronics and be able to machine accurate parts like this. So this is what I'm working on in addition to the training every week. And um, I'm gonna share this project with you whenever we get back on that. But we have plenty of things to share with you. And I just wanted to kind of uh, separate the install of this new chuck on the machine there for a Tool Tuesday episode. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching this and I hope you come back for some more projects. So we'll see you then. Mm -hmm.